Metals are used for such a massive number of different materials and products that it's really important that we know how we actually get them um, out of the Earth's crust. And the way I normally think about this is to, to divide them up into three sections. And this is all based on something called a reactivity series, which tells us which metals are most reactive and which are least. The first group I'm going to talk about are the ones right down at the bottom, the least reactive ones. Down here we have um, down here we have metals such as gold, silver, and platinum. And these are all used to make jewellery. And the reason for that is that they're incredibly non-reactive. They're, they're nice shiny metals. Um, they're quite rare in the Earth's crust. But actually, it's, even though they're quite expensive to buy because there's not much of them in the Earth's crust, uh, they're actually very easy to um, kind of get out of the Earth's crust. And the reason is that they are so unreactive is that we find them uncombined. Okay, so they're found uncombined. in the Earth's crust. So this means you could literally, if you went down to a river with a um, like a sieve or a panning sieve, if you're really lucky, you could find little pieces of gold. And this is what um, actually led to the American gold rush. People were finding gold nuggets um, uncombined in the Earth's crust. Um, we call them native metals. because they are found kind of on their own natively um, on the Earth's surface, or in the Earth's crust. The second group we're going to talk about are slightly more reactive. Um, I'm going to do these in green, and these are things like copper, um, lead, tin, iron, and zinc. What I'm going to do also is I'm just going to put a little bar here and put carbon. Okay, so this is our second category, if you like. Um, the reason why it's important that we know that carbon is up here is because we actually have to extract these from what we call ores. Now, ores are rocks which contain enough of a metal compound to make it economical or worthwhile to extract. So, ores... Ores contain enough metal to be economical. So because these um, metals here and the ones above them are um, more reactive, they will react with uh, substances like oxygen, uh, water, and they will form things like metal oxides, metal carbonates, which we need to actually get the metal out of. Um, and how we actually do this uh, for these metals is by reacting them with carbon. So let's give an example. If we have, say, um, iron oxide, which would be um, an example of an iron ore, if we were to react that with carbon, in a blast furnace, okay, we'd have to use a bit of heat, we'd have to um, use some other um, um, other substances uh, to put in, actually limestone is one of them. What will happen is the iron oxide and carbon will react. Because carbon is more reactive than iron, it's higher up in the reactivity series, it will displace the iron oxide, okay? If you think about it, if you like, as stealing the oxygen um, or the oxide from the iron oxide. So what we'd actually end up with is um, pure iron left on its own, which we could tap out the bottom, and carbon dioxide. Okay, and this is actually quite a common one that comes up as a um, as a symbol equation. So let's run through that nice and quick. Iron oxide. There's different forms of it, but let's, for the sake of argument, call it Fe2O3 here. Carbon is an element. It's C. Okay, and we're going to form pure iron, which is Fe, and carbon dioxide CO2. Now. Um, I do have videos on balancing equations. Uh, this is slightly trickier than some of them you'll get, but still relatively straightforward. Um, what you actually have to spot is that we have an odd number of oxygens here. And uh, if you work through, you actually have to double this whole side up. 
So we actually are going to end up with two Fe2O3 here. We've now got four ions, that should be a four. Six oxygens here, so we need three lots of carbon dioxide, and then a three there. Okay, so that reaction is an example of the extraction of iron from iron oxide. We actually call this a reduction reaction. And the reason we call it a reduction is because carbon is removing oxygen from iron oxide. Okay, it's reducing iron oxide to leave iron. Okay, if you get asked about oxidation, oxidation is the opposite process. It's adding oxygen. So here, carbon is oxidized to form carbon dioxide. Oxygen is added to it. So this process is great. It's quite cheap because all we have to use is uh, carbon and often a bit of heat. Carbon, we find it all um, all around the earth. It's it, you know, it makes up most of trees. It makes up a, 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 it's charcoal or coal or coke. Um, there's a lot of it on the earth. It's really, really cheap. So extracting most of these uh, metals is very, a very cheap process. Unfortunately, if we have metals that are more reactive than carbon, we can't use carbon um, to extract the metal from its ore. So for reactive metals, we have to use a different process again. Um, so these kind of substances are things like aluminium, magnesium, um, we could then have uh, calcium, sodium, potassium, okay, really reactive metals. So for these ones, we actually have to use a different process. We need to separate uh, separate the metal from the ore. And we're actually going to use a process called electrolysis, okay, which means breaking down a compound using electricity. Breaking down using electricity. Now, electricity is not chemical, so if you think about the actual equations for these processes, it's pretty straightforward. So we could have something like sodium oxide. Okay, the key thing here is here we actually have to melt the sodium oxide, so we'd have a, a, a we'd have a, um, a, a metal compound, a, a rock if you like, and we'd have to heat it up enough to melt it. If we then pass electricity or a direct current through it, we would get left with sodium, okay, and oxygen gas would be produced too. Okay, that looks really straightforward. Unfortunately, to do this, we have to melt it. So if I were to have a beaker, I would have to put in a lot of heat energy to melt the sodium oxide. Okay, so I'm gonna heat it and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna melt my sodium oxide. What you then have to do is pass a direct current through it. So you need a um, circuit and you need to use two electrodes. One of them is going to be positive, one is going to be negative. And if you were to plug all of this in, okay, you would start to get um, positive metal ions going towards the negative electron electrode. Sorry, so you would have positive, in this case, sodium ions, which would travel towards the negative electrodes, and you would get the sodium forming here. This is great, it looks nice and simple, it's relatively straightforward. However, we have to use an awful lot of heat energy to melt the rock in the first place. So it requires lots of heat energy and lots of electricity. Lots of energy required. And this makes the whole process very expensive. Okay, we've got to generate that electricity to be able to use it. We need to maybe burn a fuel to provide the heat. It's going to cost a lot of money. And that's why metals like aluminium, calcium, sodium are extremely expensive. Okay, so quick recap. Where we've got three kind of classes of, of metals, if you like. Very non-reactive ones. Native metals are found uncombined in the crust. We can um, dig them straight out of the ground. Metals are less reactive than carbon. We can react with carbon or reduce them using carbon um, to give us our pure metal. That's nice and cheap. Now, it does still need a bit of heat, but nowhere near as much as for these ones. With reactive metals, we have to use electrolysis, which is breaking down a compound using electricity. We need an awful lot of heat energy to melt the metal compound first, and then we have to use a lot of electricity, a direct current, um, so it's extremely expensive. One last little note here. Since all these ores um, are dug out of the ground, um, they're effectively non-renewable. You know, Once we've, once we've uh, dug up the ore once, we can't, uh, we can't then use it to make, to make the metal again. And this means it's really, really important to recycle metals when we finish using them. That's going to conserve resources. And it's also going to take a lot less energy to recycle a metal um, than it takes to produce more from the ore. We don't have to go through um, either of these processes again um, 
to extract the metal if we recycle it.